Hey guys, so ever since the Model 3 Highlander was first released, there has been some subtle but very noticeable changes to the car overall. Some regions and markets have different upgrades and options, while others are forced to look differently because of rules and regulations. A few good examples here would be the differences between the North American and the European offerings. Some options here are currently limited through software and will eventually be enabled through a later software update, but they would be for the European specific model and that would be the adaptive headlights, the rear fog lights, and also the speed chime limiter. Those are a couple of things we won't be getting in the US and some of them are negative, some of them are positive depending on how you see things. But the US does have one difference here and that would be the amber reflective lights inside of the headlight housing. So obviously if you don't look closely into this, you won't even know it's there, but there are a couple other noticeable changes that has happened to the Model 3 that you may have not known. Now the list that I have here isn't ordered in any specific specific way. I'm just quite surprised that Tesla hasn't really advertised any of these upgrades and waiting for us to find out ourselves. Now this is obviously going to be a comparison between the older Model 3 design and the newer one. So these are going to be the very clear differences if you parked your new Model 3 Highland right next to the older design. We'll first start off with some of the more obvious and visual differences and then we'll get closer into detail with what the VP of engineering has given us. The first few differences you'll notice here right as you walk up to the new Model 3s is going to be the larger cameras. This is the hardware for system and somewhat is going to look protruded whereas the older Model 3 looks a little bit smaller in person. They are much higher quality and higher resolution overall so if you get to sit inside of a new Model 3 Highland compare it next to the older one you will be able to see a big difference when pulling up the rear and the side cameras. Then if we go to the back of the car here you are going to notice your second real change and that is going to be the logo and the emblems. Tesla has completely moved away from the T logo and it seems like they are going to be doing it for the rest of the lineup very soon. This is where they want to simplify the design, remove the T logo and spell out the entire text at the rear trunk. I personally find this a lot more attractive and a lot more sleek looking than what we had prior. Now what's interesting here that you may not have noticed and if you look really closely at the side angles of the T and the side angles of the Tesla spelled out, you will notice that it is one fourth the thickness of the actual logo. This means that it is going to be much cheaper and much easier to replace when the time comes that the sticker itself is failing. All right, so on to the fourth thing here that you may have glanced over. This is going to be at the front of the car and that is the new headlight housing. Now this is quite obvious that it's not only the headlight housing itself, but what's on the inside that really matters. On the inside, you will notice now that Tesla has moved away from the projector bulbs and now they've re-implemented the reflectors. Now this just isn't any big basic reflector housing. This is the more advanced one with the dimmable zones. This is what allows the European models to have the adaptive headlight beams. If you want to know more about this new headlight and the adaptive high beam software that just came out to the European market, definitely go check out my previous video because we went all in on that and we saw some really nice demos of it. Now moving on to the next one here, this is going to be the addition of a PWS system. This is the pedestrian warning system that allows people to hear that rearing noise that you hear when you back up your vehicle. Tesla has decided with the new Model 3 Highland to add an additional one at the rear of the car. This is likely to amplify the amount of sound given that it is quite enough being an EV car. But of course, in addition to this, you get to make use of both speakers with some of the nice features inside of your Tesla. This means that all the boombox is going to be coming out of both speaker and it's going to be much louder and much more clear when you are camping on the outside. All right, so on to the sixth one here and this is on the interior of the car. You may not notice it right away but if you compare it to the different trims in the same segment you will notice that there is a very slight difference to the door panels. This time around Tesla has opted for a more permanent difference between the different types of trim. So going from the base model to the long range you're going to notice a slight difference in the material that's on the door.
door panel. So one, you're getting Alcantara, and the other, you're going to be getting Fabric. Of course, we have been talking about the Performance Ludicrous Model 3. This is going to be more of a drastic difference even. You guys can definitely go check out the interior changes of this vehicle. I will drop that link in the description below as well. Now on to the next and final thing here on the list, and this has to be the differences between the center horn compared to the older models. You may have first sat inside your car and clicked on the horn and wondered why it sounded so odd there is a big big change here in terms of the output and the differences between the sound coming out of your car the straight fact here is that Tesla has removed the horn altogether from the model 3 and now purely relies on the PWS system as we mentioned earlier this may be exactly the reason why Tesla has added the secondary speaker on the outside as with previous models they noticed that it isn't outputting as much as it should have so instead of relying on the traditional horn mounted at the front of the bumper you you are now seeing it come through the two speakers that are underneath of the car. This means that you may be getting much better sound and clarity overall. We will have to be testing this alongside the older models to see how that really is. But really, with what we know so far, Tesla has really improved on many of the key areas of the Tesla Model 3 Highland. And this is where we are all going to experience all the best features from the premium models all the way down to the base model trim. So pushing aside all the minor little things, I would say that the Model 3 rear wheel drive base model is the best bang for your buck as of right now if you are in the market for a new sedan there is nothing on the same level and with the same quality and features that you will get from this car this is seriously the very first time ever that I would not mind recommending the base model to my friends and family this is really just how good it is all right so with those visual differences aside that you can personally look and find yourself these are some key components that the VP of engineering has provided us these are going to be the things that makes it very different from the new car and the old one. First off, we are looking at the trunk space. If this isn't obvious enough, the upgraded Model 3 does get those additional pockets on the side. This is thanks to their engineering of the subwoofers, now gaining an additional subwoofer and then also giving us more space back. Along with the increased space in the trunk, now you are going to get a more solid trunk feeling overall. They've added an additional strut at the back of the car, meaning that if you take a look on both sides now, you will be seeing both sides pushing the trunk up rather than just one. You may not notice this right away, but over time you will notice that the lip of your trunk is going to be bent with the older models this is because it's only pushing up at one end rather than both with the newer models it's going to be coming up much more straight and much more better sounding overall so now moving back inside of the car the company has found some inefficiency with how the package of the overall is laid out so now they've actually given us more seat cushion and a better leg room with better spacing on the inside in addition to this the seats are now better inclined than it was previously meaning that you are able to lean back in your seat much better position than you had with the old model threes so if this isn't cool enough there is one additional thing that you can see from the inside of the car as well as the outside this is the additional anchor point that you're gonna see at the bottom portion of your door there is going to be an opening that the anchor point can connect to and this will provide better crash protection and better sound insulation overall this is such a big improvement than what we had seen previously all right so with those smaller things aside you guys may have already been shocked by all the key differences uh, but there is one even more bigger thing that you may have have missed the VP of engineering Lars has given us some insight on how the changes are made in regards to the suspension with the design of the new model 3 Highland there is a unique shock absorbing technology built with inside and this is going to take away some of the more critical points of the car that you may feel while going through the roads this new technology here is called frequency selective dampening which means that it's able to provide even more comfort on the inside of the cabin this is made to isolate certain frequencies while you're inside of your cabin and these are very very small things but they are very important to decreasing the overall sound on the inside now you may not even believe this but the team has dedicated all their efforts into removing the frequency that your belly makes while it shakes around four to six Hertz is where they have determined it and by removing this or isolating this overall you are going to hear a much better sound on the inside of your car as you are driving it now if you have a hard time believing this just as much as I 
I do, he went on to attach an image to show that the frequencies the body makes overall is quite larger than what you may think. I would say that this is one of the coolest thing any company could ever focus on and all the minute details that we have missed is going to play a big part in our experience overall. So on the very last note here and something you may have also missed is the question whether Tesla has a dedicated tire size and tire recommendation for your vehicles. You can obviously go into any tire shop out there and they will fit you with a more generic brand, but Lars has confirmed that Tesla does have very specific Tesla tires and these are the ones that are marked with T's. So if you go inside of a tire shop and you find one that does have T0, T1, and T2, those are marked Tesla tires and those are very specific for EVs and specific to Teslas. So there you guys have it. Hopefully you discovered something new about your car that you may not have known previously and this is something that we all really need to know and hopefully Tesla does add this onto their website so we all get to find out all the little interesting things that we don't know yet. There is going to be a lot of of changes and updates happening in the next couple weeks and I want to continue to follow up and update you on everything that goes on so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that bell notification if you haven't already done so and follow me on x at hey john e you guys can dm me and chat with me over there and of course if you do want to support the channel I do have a patreon link which I will drop in the description below this should wrap it up for this one I hope you guys enjoyed it this is john once again peace out